Good afternoon, brethren. Today's report will be the report on the Mountaindale session. As many of you know that uh, just recently in New York, they concluded the two-week uh, Mountaindale session. And uh, it was the uh, first session in, I believe, three or four years. It's, you know, since COVID, they, they didn't do it. And uh, so it's been a while since the session had uh, come together. And uh, here we see a picture of the grounds in uh, Mountaindale, New York. And uh, this is where the session was had. And uh, so many of the brethren have come to us asking how the session went. And, of course, we've done a, a video. I, I mean, we've done a, a blog report. And we've also updated on our Truth, our, uh, Truth Tellers uh, Facebook site giving a, a report. But we thought, well, it would be good to go into the, uh, the details and, and what happened at the session uh, through this YouTube uh, channel that we have. So, before we begin, let us kneel and pray and ask the Lord to guide us. Our other Heavenly Father, thank you again for allowing us to be with the brethren today and to speak thy words of truth, and also to give them the report on the Mountaindale session. And we know that this message is very precious and uh, is the last message, and therefore we want to be a people that <clears throat> can give this last message and uh, in honoring you in, in your truth and not countering uh, falsehood and, and propagating falsehood. So in this vein, we're asking for your guidance and uh, please guide us to do this report in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to begin here with our report and uh, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> The first quote we find is a spirit of fairishisms it has been coming in upon the people who claim to believe the truth for these last days. They are self-satisfied. They have said, we have the truth. There is no more light for the people of God. But we are not safe when we take a position that we will not accept anything else than that upon which we have settled as truth. We should take the Bible and investigate it closely for ourselves. We should dig in the mine of God's word for truth. That's found at Counselors to Writers and Editors, page 34. Men entertain errors when the truth is clearly marked out, and if they would but bring their doctrines to the word of God and not read the word of God in the light of their doctrines to prove their ideas right, they would not walk in doc darkness and blindness or cherish error. Many give the words of the scripture a meaning that suits their own opinions, and they mislead themselves and deceive others by their misrepresentations of God's word. Councils of Writers and Editors, page 36. Oh, brethren, so powerful. This word of God is so right on that, that uh, it, it's just, it leaves us speechless. This is what we're witnessing today. And I'm saying this not to just Seventh-day Adventists. I'm saying it to Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. And you'll see what we mean what we mean as we go. All right, so what happened on the good of this session? Well, not too much. Number one, it was well attended. There was, I believe, about 100 people online and maybe 25 uh, in person. So 125 people came together approximately, uh, for the session. That wasn't every day, but that was uh, 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 one of the, the times we noticed when it was well attended. Uh, we ourselves attended um, about halfway. We, we, we'll, we'll get to that more, but uh, we had to cut it short about halfway, and there's reasons behind that. Uh, both uh, online and in person. So this year's session was uh, conducted with online uh, ability to attend and in person, whereas in the past, uh, most of the sessions were just in person. I believe there may have been one in 2018, 19 that was uh, uh, online as well, but that was a terrible one because they had uh, this camera with somebody in his hands and it was shaking all around and oh, it was just bad news. But anyway, that was a good thing uh, that happened and uh, it, it was a long session, which is good. There was a lot of issues raised, uh, 14 days in total. Seven were religious topics and uh, seven were business. And uh, so we, we give them credit that they at least uh, put the right time in, the length of time, to go over the issues. So, unfortunately, that's the extent of what we saw as the good. 
All right, so what happened on the bad? Well, the worst thing of all was they voted to keep hold of the following doc doctrines. Number one, the new codes are inspired and part of the Golden Bowl. And we'll touch on that right now. As many of you know, we had 19 meetings with the Brethren of Faith of all different uh, associations, independents, and so forth. And we carefully looked over all the new codes. And we found, I believe, 17 that were in harmony and seven that were not. Um, but what we found as conclusion is that it's a mixture. It's a mixture of truth and error. And so for that being said, we as, as uh, present truth believers and, and proclaimers of the greatest light there is on the planet, right? There's no other greater light than the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist knowledge. Their knowledge of scripture, their knowledge of prophecy cannot be beat anywhere in the whole world. And I'm talking about the high quality, you know, Christian uh, faith leaders and uh, Jewish scholars. All these people can't come close to Davidian Seventh-day Adventist understanding. Now, with that mantle, with that high honor from God, Mountaindale has just declared truth and error can be part of our message. Brother, terrible, terrible before the Lord. So these new codes, which have seven outright errors, and not talking about just little minor ones, I'm talking about prophetic errors in them, uh, we are to accept. That's what Mountaindale now says. And let's just wink at them. Let's just push them under the rug and carry on. Oh, brethren. Number two, Jacob's time of trouble comes before Ezekiel 9. Now, you can see some of our videos and go on God's Love. And we'll put, post some links where you can uh, read some of these uh, materials for your better understanding. But they have now said that we have to throw out the type, throw out Jacob and what he did, and let's create a new type. <laughs> In other words, uh, let's say that Jacob had his trouble while in his adopted land, while in the in the homeland of Laban. That's when he had his trouble. Brother, that was not the case. Jacob had left his adopted land and was traveling well on his way, 90% to the kingdom, when he experiences Jacob's time of trouble. That's the type. But they say, never mind the type. Let's make up a new type. Okay, number number C, or letter C. The fundamental beliefs are not in sequence when it comes to number five and number seven. Now, uh, they were uh, agreeing that the fundamental beliefs were in sequence, apparently, but they have a disagreement with number five and number seven. Well, what is number seven? Number seven is the Jacob's time of trouble. So they say, even though it says in the fundamental beliefs, clearly, that seven comes after four, which four is Ezekiel 9, they say you can't believe what you see. In other words, they're gaslighting us, brother. They're saying, you see what you see, you read what you read, don't believe it. You believe what we're going to tell you. Terrible, terrible, brother. Number, uh, letter D, Assyrian Confederacy, as we have been taught down through the years, and originally from Donadare of Salem. They won't admit this. You tell, tell them, oh, you're teaching from Donadare. No, we're not. We come up with our own. No, 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 brother. Don't fall for it. Donadare, and he even is on recording. Now, this was a private recording, so we're not at liberty to give it publicly. But a sister was with Donadare a year or two ago, I don't remember, and recorded their interview. And they and she, he was asked point blank, where did you get this Syrian confederacy said? A study from. And Don Adair admits it came from himself. After he did his studies, he came up with his Assyrian Confederacy teaching. Okay, so, and this was taught, remember now, this was taught from him. And now who did he teach? He teached many of the current leaders of Waco, many of the current leaders of Mountaindale come from Don Adair or Anthony Hebert's teaching. And Anthony Hebert was the number one pupil of Don Adair. He was the most brightest. He was the most learned. He learned from Don Adair. And therefore, he went out and taught other brothers, okay, that is today our leaders in many of these associations, <clears throat> Waco and Be or, uh, uh, Mountaindale particularly. And uh, so uh, uh, they're now proclaiming this Assyrian Confederacy is the truth, and we must teach it. Or if you want to be a part of Mountaindale, you must teach it. All right, so this being the case, an ultimatum has now been sent out to the field. 
they have now passed a resolution that a statement must be signed by all Bible workers employed by, Mount, by Mountaindale to agree to teach the aforementioned doctrines, or they will be forced out as an employee of Mountaindale Association. A line has been drawn in the sand. Okay, so Mountaindale has now drawn this line in the sand. You cross over it, you're done. This is serious, brethren, very serious. And I want to stop here just one second. <clears throat> and I want to say to those that were throwing rocks outside and condemning the work of us hard workers to try to bring Mountaindale into line, shame on you. May the Lord judge you accordingly. Anybody that was condemning our, our new code studies, uh, all the things that we tried to do to help our brethren before it was too late. And you sat back and threw rocks and you, you said bad things and, and ridiculed our work. How dare you before God. May God judge this situation as he sees fit. We were there in the ditches, in the, in the, in the foxholes, trying to save our brethren. And we went all the way to the end, brethren. Okay? We were at session. We spoke up. And it was our last gallant effort to wake these brothers up. So I commend each and every brother, uh, brethren and sisters even, that stood on the side of truth and, and tried to awaken the brethren. All right, so what work workers stood for the truth in session? Here they are. Brother Terry Harrison, a longtime member of Mountaindale. Brother Rene Reyes, a longtime member of Mountaindale. These two brethren, God bless them. They stood up, brethren, for the truth. They were not going to be kowtowed into being gaslighted. You see what you see? You read what you read? Don't believe it. Believe us. This is what the essence of gaslighting is, brethren. These brothers did not go with the gaslighting. They stood firm for Christ. And who is Christ? I am the way, the truth, and the life. These brothers stood up for the truth. So God bless them. And we need more of these brothers like this. Okay? We need more brothers to stand up and say, enough's enough. We can't be mixing air with truth. How dare, us, how, how dare we do this and, and try to honor Christ at the same time? Oh, brother. Serious. All right, so what did we see here? We saw censorship. Only tithe payers were allowed to attend, and only cardholders were allowed to raise their hand in Zoom and speak. Now let's look at councils of writers and editors, page 35. There is no excuse for anyone in taking the position that there is no more truth to be revealed, and that all our expositions of Scripture are without an error. The fact that certain doctrines have been, uh, have been, uh, boy, I tell you, you know, it looks like something's missing there. Uh, okay, brethren, I'm, I apologize. The fact that certain doctrines have been held as truth, uh, yeah, I believe it says, there is no excuse for anyone in taking the position that there's no more truth to be revealed, that all our expositions, uh, of scripture are without an error. The fact that certain doctrines have been held as truth for many years by our people is not a proof that our ideas are infallible. Age will not make error into truth. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, brethren? Uh, you know, it's just like uh, uh, the brethren of Mountaindale and those taught from Don Adair think that age somehow is going to turn truth, error into truth. Unbelievable. And truth can afford to be fair. Here's why we want to put this reference out. What does it say? Truth can afford to be fair. No true doctrine will lose anything upon close investigation. It could be fair. Brethren, why was Mountaindale censoring those that, that only those that could attend were tithe pairs? And why were they censoring long-time faithful those that keep the association afloat with their hard-earned dollars, why were they censoring them, censoring them not to speak, not to raise a hand, even for a question in session? Terrible, brethren. This is what we witnessed. All right, so let's, let's talk about something that you can think about. Did our king censor or restrict the people to come to listen to the truth? For instance, the Sermon on the Mount. When he put that Sermon on the Mount, 
did Christ, before he st started, peek out into the crowd and say, Hey, I don't recognize you as one of my followers. Would you please leave? Of course not, brother. The Lord is all-encompassing. Let any and all, the drunkard, the wayward man from the street, anyone come and listen to the words of truth. But not Mountaindale. Mountaindale says, No, we shall censor you out if we see you're not worthy. Terrible, brother. What about the Syrophoenicians? Okay. What about some of those that are curious? They want to come in. Well, the rod and the, the Bible itself teach that the Syrophoenicians cannot be turned down. We cannot say, sorry, uh, there'll be another day for you. We, got, we can't let you join today. Oh, brother, this is not even according to Scripture, the Bible, what, these, what this Mountain Dale has done. Does this help or dispel our being labeled a cult? Of course it helps people to, to call us a cult. We're private. We're secretive. We don't let certain people come in and see what we're doing. Oh, brethren, this is just, this is just unreal. All right, so where do we go from here? It's imperative, therefore, that every present truth believer teach and practice only present truth. That is, teach nothing more or less than what is published, and do nothing more or less than what the message calls for. Thus putting aside your own thoughts and your own ways, and availing yourself to the Lord, so Isaiah 58, 8 and 9, in exclusive devotion to the spirit of air? No, brother, the spirit of truth. You will see eye to eye and speak the same thing. Then only will you be able to dispel the spirit of confusion and retain the spirit of love and unity. This is the only way we're going to be able to continue to unite, brethren, is with devotion to the truth. Devotion to the truth is not accepting air and truth and calling it devotion to the truth. Okay? We've got to wake up here. This is terrible what Mountaindale has done this session. And it's caused some brethren to rethink everything. All right. That being said, where do we go from here? Well, we know that Ezekiel 47 is God's roadmap. Okay. It's not mankind's, but it's in the Bible. And God says, and so does the rod, that the message is always to head towards the east. Okay. And we already know. We went over this in... Uh, some of our videos, but we'll recap real quick. Started out in Los Angeles, California, and then it went to Waco and was there for many years, 20 years. Brother Hoddup did his faithful uh, compiling the rod message. And then it had to, unfortunately, because of knockout blow, regroup right here in, uh, in uh, California. Again, near the uh, Vista area, I believe. I, I, I don't remember exactly where it was, but they did re recoup in uh, 61, 62, and uh, stayed there until, I believe, about 69. And then the brethren agreed that what are we doing here? We've got to get back on the roadmap. And so they held a meeting, and it was agreed that the Ezekiel 47 roadmap was God's course, and that they continued to go forward, not here, but they went straight on through to Salem. Okay, Salem. And uh, so this was the uh, the area that they were at for many years. And then, of course, we know the story. We know the story that um, Don Adair, as he's wont to do, produced some false doctrine. And uh, one of them was that those with, in other words, uh, the 144,000 is not all that's going to be saved from the church, that there's going to be others from the church. And Thank God the brethren there uh, rebelled against that, and they had to move on. Once the Adair kicked them out of the uh, the association, well, this was the first kick out. So they uh, they went ahead and regrouped, continued eastward up to Mountaindale, New York. Okay, now Mountaindale, New York, uh, was doing well for a couple of years, and then they had the uh, the big meeting where some of the brethren said, well, if you read the rod, it calls Waco, Texas, the permanent home, okay? So some of these brethren were under the impression that there must be a headquarters in, or a, a division at least, of in Waco, Texas. 
So they regrouped and some left Mountaindale and went back here and formed what is today Waco Organization. And this is the second Waco Organization, not the first, which was disbanded by uh, Florence Hoddoff in 1962. But this is the other one that was uh, formed, I believe, in uh, 90, uh, what year, 92, I believe it was. Uh, so it was reformed. But this Mountaindale still in our view and many brethren was still considered the headquarters now as we teach in, in many videos that this is a division of mountaindale yes they will not admit it oh this is understood that many of them have too much pride they think oh you know what let's cross out this guy over here and let's just say we're the only ones <laughs> so that's what they teach brethren but that's not looking at it from the lord's point of view that's looking at it from a selfish self-centered point of view so where do we go? Here's Mountaindale. Now remember in, in Salem here, the uh, the kick out, the first kick out appeared, appeared here, right? And now it looks like there's going to be a second repeat, a double application of this end time kick out. And that is that those brethren that won't sign the ultimatum statement look like they're going to be kicked out, brethren. Okay, so where are we going to go from there? Well, only the Lord knows. We're going to have some meetings and, and figure out the best course to take. Now, we heard some from some brethren, and you know, one brother in particular said, Oh, I heard from a brother. He said, Why don't we make all of us individual storehouses around the world? So in other words, one could be here, one over there, one there, one California, one over here, Utah, whatever, Florida, you know, and all over the world. Let's have individual storehouses, brethren. That's just so terrible teaching. That's almost as bad as those with teaching. That's how bad it is. No, God has always had organizational leadership, organizational foundation. And he's not about to say that we can have a bunch of independent atoms all over the world answering to no one except he himself. This isn't how the Lord works. So we're under prayer right now. Uh, there may very well be another split where it's kept in the same location. I don't know, maybe it might be even further east here. I'm not sure. But one thing we know is that if this breakup occurs, we cannot do, for instance, let's say what uh, Linux Sam has done. Okay, he's followed the eastward course, and then uh, he tells the Lord, wait a minute, Lord, you're not right. What we got to do is buckle around and have the river go back west and settle back down here. And of course, you know, Sam, let Sam will deny this prophecy because it doesn't fit him well, right? I mean, if he was to agree with it, he would be in real trouble. <laughs> so he's got to, you know, there's an old saying, give a man a good story and the facts will come trampling after. This is the case of letting Sam. He got, he's got a great story, so he thinks. So he, in his mind, he's got a great story. But you know what? He's got to go get all the facts so he can put it together for his story. One of those facts is you're not supposed to believe Ezekiel 47. It's incorrect. <laughs> so anyway, brother. So anyway, this is the uh, the understanding that we need to have. Uh, we're praying about it. We ask that you guys, uh, all the brethren, brethren and sisters out there in the, in the message, pray for Mountain Dale. Pray for the brethren that uh, we can soon know what to do. Uh, we, 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 we don't anticipate it taking too long, but we do need to, to make uh, <clears throat> something happen. We obviously cannot uh, continue with an organization that has declared that uh, dedication can be to air and truth. Not just truth, but air and truth. We're not going to be dedicated like that, brethren. So thank you for listening, and uh, we hope you've been enlightened about the situation now developing and uh, anything else new that's come along, we will uh, either post it here on the YouTube channel or, or our blog, uh, uh, Hear Ye the Rod. Uh, and again, we'll post all those necessary uh, reports and so forth for your viewing uh, in the description box. So thank you again for listening. And until next time, may God continue to guide you into all truth. Amen.